Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, tonight's question was, I forget who asked it, but I think it was in passing or through a message or something, but they were asking, you know, how do you organize and store your seeds? You know, as you grow as a farm, as you get more years, you start to have all sorts of seeds, stuff you trialed, and the stuff gets old, and there's boxes and boxes, and how does it all work? So on our farm, we developed a system which we felt worked for us. Um, it's not, you know, super ideal, but it's um, how it developed and it worked for us. And I'll go ahead and share that with you. And um, let me kind of pull the screen around and we'll just jump onto the board and go ahead and get started. So first thing is that once you, you know, your box of seeds comes in and you got all these different types, but how do you keep them organized? So we actually went and just got little boxes like this, and you can get all different sizes. You can get weatherproof ones, watertight ones, um, and we just label on the front what's in it, what type of seeds in it, and uh, put those on the shelf, and it's really easy then to access. All right, but how do you break those up? And so for us, um, we would break those up in a couple different ways. So one would be the seeds that were only going to be with us for one year. So that would be the onion, leek, and parsnip. So after one year, theirs are pretty much junk. Unless you're going to, um, unless you're going to, you know, put them in the freezer or something like that to try to get longer time out of them. But we would go ahead and seed these guys, actually, and then wait a couple weeks, make sure they germed pretty well, the ones came up, and then after that, we'd go ahead and just toss those because we don't need them. They're next year; they're going to be junk anyway. We tried to actually plant what we ordered, so we wouldn't have any extra, but you always tend to have a few extra. Um, the next group for us was the microgreens. And so the microgreens usually came in larger bags anyway. And so, you know, like 50 pounds of uh, pea seeds and, you know, five pounds of radish and that kind of stuff. So we would normally actually have two boxes on these. We would have the, the back stock, which the big bulk ones, and then we'd have a weekly seeding box for micros. Now this leads me to the other box we would have for weekly seedings, which would be our weekly field seeding. So in that we would have, you know, the current greens we were using, some current lettuces. If we were seeding beans during the summer, that would be in that same box, you know, radishes and spinach and cilantro, things like that. And those crops would be in this one box, which would always be in the same spot. We just grab it and walk right out to the field. And after the seeding was done for the day, we'd come back in, check our inventories in that box, and make sure that you know we had plenty of, of, of stuff for that. So um, then our other type we would have would be our carrot and beet. And I don't know why these two always get together, but for us, we would actually see them both two weeks apart on a bi-weekly schedule. So that's why they kind of hung out together. And again, some of those carrots and beets might be in the weekly seeding box because, again, they're being seeded every other week, and it just makes sense to have some of those there. Um, the other box for us would be our peppers, tomatoes, and eggplant. And I think we put those together because that was more of a one-time seeding. So some of those crops that get seeded only one time a year, they would kind of hang out together there. Um, the other box we would have would be squash. So we'd also have a box for our summer and winter squash. Again, those are seeded very infrequently. Um, so they'd hang out together. And then our brassicas. So all our cabbage and broccoli and rutabagas and that sort of thing. And Chinese cabbage would hang out in their own box. So that's kind of how we set up. Now some of these would have their own box. So we may have another box for just lettuce. Um, and uh, that would that would also work for us. And then we probably also have another box for just beans. Um, so it depends on kind of how those are set up. We just have those. All right. So let's say you've got your boxes. Now you've got stuff like, organized. But let's say what happens is, oh my gosh, my favorite pepper seed, they dropped it. Or they had a, a crop failure. And so you know you've got some seed left over. But how do you make sure that's going to last as long as possible for you? Uh, so this happened a number of years ago with us when we had Bolero, Bolero Carrot. Now Bolero Carrot to us, to me, is top carrot ever. Um, should win an award every year for just being out there still. But they decided, the industry said, hey, we're going to drop it next year. So we went out and bought a million seeds. And that was a big, box, a big bag of, of carrot seeds. And what we did was we researched on how to preserve carrot seed for as long as possible. So what that meant was putting it in a moisture-proof um, container 
in a deep freeze. And we wanted to get that temperature and humidity as low as possible. So we wanted to dry those seeds out and also get them really cold. So in like these national labs, which are storing seeds for dozens of years, they're storing them, some of them actually in liquid nitrogen. Now we didn't go that far, but ideally, if let's say you have a tomato, like buffalo tomato is still being used by a few growers because they bought thousands of seeds stuck it in the freezer with silica gel in a very sealed tight um, container. And I've seen people use like ammo boxes and then put the silica gel in the bottom and stick the seeds in there and the mat will go in the freezer. Um, you know, all sorts of things. Um, so let's also talk a little bit about the environment. So we said, you know, that's the best environment, cold and dry. So obviously that's going to transition back to these seeds as well. So for us, we usually store them in the basement, in the cool area, a dry area in the basement. Sometimes we'll actually put a dehumidifier in there to keep that moisture level down. And then, um, yeah, and so that usually works for that. So trying to keep them cool and dry. Now, let's say, well, I'm going out to the field, I'm going to seed. And we were having problems with sometimes you're out there seeding and a, a rainstorm pops up and you start to have issues that way. Or you take your box of seeds out to the greenhouse and they're sitting on that hot bench cooking in the sun for hours on end. And that can um, you know, also cause some degradation as well. So, um, so how do we take care of that? Oh, I'll show you. We actually... We got these coolers for something else, and um, then we actually started using these for our seeds. So we would take two of them out to the field with us. We'd actually do two different colors, and one would always have the seeds that we're, we're seeding from, and then the other color, let's say green in this situation, would um, be the box that the seeds are going to. So we would try to always have a box that we were seeding out of, and then when we were done seeding that 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 type of seed, it would go in the other box, and that way we wouldn't we'd never miss a seed. Um, so I'd, I'd always come back to the farm sometimes and be like, "Oh my gosh, I forgot to seed that thing. I didn't check it off my list, or I missed it, or something." So this way, that really eliminates that. And the reason for these coolers is they're they're keeping the heat out of there too, and they're keeping the seeds super dry. So I'll go ahead and list this um, this link here in the show notes, um, so you can go ahead and, um, and and grab a couple of those coolers. They're definitely worth the twenty five bucks, and um, that's that. One other quick thing before I go, another seed that's um, that the shelf life is very short would be the would be lettuce, pelleted lettuces especially. So if you are pelleting some of those um, seeds, it does tend to decrease the shelf life because some of those are primed as well, which means that they're trying to you know get that to germ already. So sometimes they're clipping it or they're heat treating it or light treating it just to, to get it to germ faster and more consistently for you. But that will decrease the shelf life significantly. So do think about that as you're ordering your Salanovas and that sort of thing and those those high ticket items. So. All right, I hope that's been helpful. Go ahead and like and share and uh, comment below. If you have any questions, feel free to shout them out to me. I've been getting some great ones over the last couple days and can't wait to get to them, although we are starting to get a backlog. So maybe I need to go do a deep dive long version of this um, some night here, and we'll dive into a few, a few questions, try to get four or five or six at a time. And, all right, hope that was helpful. All right, go ahead and have a great night.